In one of my previous videos, I briefly mentioned the GeoDatabase being a proprietary ArcGIS format. GeoDatabases are a bit more beefy than your conventional shapefiles and tables, and we're going to take a look at that. Um, in this slide, I uh, talked about GeoDatabases, uh, how they work, and they manage coverages, shapefiles, and tables inside of a database management system, or a DBMS for short. Enterprise geodatabases um, can have multiple users and requires a host uh, database management system such as SQL Server, Oracle, or IBM DB2 here. When I was uh, working for a marathon in Findlay, Ohio, um, this is the sort of uh, geodatabase structure that they used, okay? Um, and because of it, you know, they could use other vendor software to plug into it, they could use access to plug into it. Um, that's really the advantage of an enterprise setup is that. Um, the data exists on a server, and that format uh, can be used to plug into many different uses um, by many different users. Okay, and um, so that's that's I guess why it's uh, why it's preferred in that case. Um, now let's scale that down, and we go to a personal geodatabase. Um, it's a single user. It's often stored locally, just on a local machine. Um, other people can access that, but that's generally not um, it's preferred use. It says here that it's based on the uh, Microsoft Jet Engine and it appears as a .mdb file um, which is what Microsoft Access's extension is. Um, so as you're going through your uh, Windows Explorer you'll you'll find that your geodatabases look just like an access table. As a matter of fact um, I think some versions of Access can open up the tables that are in there. Obviously not the shape files. Um, but, um, but I have seen where access can be used uh, in <coughs> in tangent with uh, ArcGIS. Um, moving on to the next slide here, um, it more accurately represents the shape of features. I think the I think the example that uh, that they use often when they're uh, trying to sell this particular point of a geodatabase is that, like on a line or a polygon, uh, kind of the idea behind these is that they're drawn with what's called vertices, and a vertice is basically a point. And the vertices represent a point, or two vertices can connect one line, and and these line or these points rather, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, but when you move the points, the line basically rubber bands. Okay, it stretches out to where these vertices are. And um, to do a arc or a half circle, you're going to have to have uh, basically, you know, it's, it's going to kind of look like dots in the shape of a half circle and then the line's going to connect those dots okay I, I i think maybe you understand that um but uh but in the case of a geodatabase what it is is that instead of having all these little dots connecting to try and simulate a half circle well with a geodatabase shape file you can actually have a mathematical arc or a mathematical half circle there um just between two points so you have two points but then you've got a perfect arc there okay so it's definitely more accurate in that sense. Um, moving on, many users can edit geographic data simultaneously. Again, that was emphasized in the previous slide. Um, modern organizations prefer database approach to working with map layers. Um, provides a uniform and IT compliant repository for geographic data. Okay. Um, basically, your IT guys, or if that's maybe what you end up going into is uh, information technology. Um, information systems, that sort of thing. Um, this is going to be something that's a little more comfortable to you because this is going to be a format that you should already be somewhat familiar with as far as how it operates. And, um, and you know, again, going back to my previous experience, um, Marathon had, you know, a staff just on, you know, keeping that baby up, okay? And, uh, and so they were constantly, you know, bringing up updates and, you know, running automatic uh, you know, checks on it and stuff like that. It, it was pretty, pretty big beast. Uh, you know, to cover so many thousands of pipelines and all that, thousands of miles, I guess I should say. Um, but here that also says file-based approach is old-fashioned. Well, and that may be the case. Now, most companies aren't using this massive enterprise setup. Um, you know, most of them are going to be. Uh, the, I'll say the majority of GIS users are out of, you know, like say municipal offices, um, you know, um, maybe like a, a local utility, something like that. 
those are going to be the majority of users. Um, and, you know, some of them are using geodatabases, don't get me wrong on that. But the shape files, the file based approach, even though it says it's old fashioned here, is still widely used. Okay. Um, you know, granted, ESRI has been pushing to, you know, transition to the geodatabase, and I think they have a good cause to do it. Um, you know, making that transition, you know, I mean, some people haven't even updated their software in a decade. Um, so making a transition like that, it can be a little intimidating. But to their credit, um, ESRI has tried to make it as easy as possible. I mean, it's not like you have to buy a new software or anything. Um, you know, like uh, in this slide, we see, um, you know, them showing how to create a new database. It's just like creating a new shape file. Uh, within our catalog, you just click on New, Geodatabase. Um, just like if you want a personal or file geodatabase, you know, and um, like a shape file, put in, you know, whatever parameters you need. And then you can start putting in your shape files, I'll say, inside the geodatabase. So um, it, it's pretty simple. I mean, just like basically make, making a folder, I guess, to even make it simpler. Um, and then um, you can import data into a geodatabase. So when you right click on your geodatabase, you can just put import, like say shapefile for example, go to the existing shapefile, click on that, and it'll just suck it right in and convert it to a geodatabase format. It's really that easy. Here you can do the same with uh, data tables or a raster. A geodatabase can hold uh, multiple data types within one single geodatabase. Um, so you don't have like, um, well, I mean, in a shape file, you're going to have where a shape file has to be a point, you know, the whole time, or line, or polygon. The geodatabase isn't limited by those restrictions. It, it can hold a point shape file. It can hold a line shape file. Those still need to be um, segregated like that, but they can all be in one big file. And we're going to take a look at that here in just a minute. You can also export data from a geodatabase, so if you've already got existing stuff in there, you can export it out to a shape file, or you can like transfer it to another geodatabase. Um, again, they're just trying to make it very, very simple. The geodatabase supports all different elements of GIS data used by ArcGIS. Um, the structural elements of a geodatabase are listed here, um, and these are just elements used to develop, develop a rich GIS. The next few slides here, I am going to um, just kind of flash them up for five seconds each if you need more time uh, to look them over. Uh, just pause the video and uh, you can read some more of the details. Um, also, you'll see that um, they've got a symbol for each type next to it. So when you open up your geodatabase inside of our catalog, you'll see um, you know, that the symbols match up to that file type or that data type. So as you can see, um, like what I said at the beginning, that uh, geodatabases are a lot more than just your regular shape files and tables. Um, they really are more flexible. You can, um, especially with the like the Arc Editor and Arc Info license levels, um, you can put in like a networks, um, you know, where you can define like utility networks and how like a water pipeline, which way the waters can flow, how the network connects to one another, that sort of thing. I've just been recently working on that uh, for a client where I work and uh, found out that um, you know one of the computers didn't have the right license level to sit there and work with that. So, um, so kind of having to work with that. So, all right, um, that's going to wrap it up for this lesson.